money isn't real, then he's just a low value dude. That's the reality of the game. The reality of the game is if the guy has choices, he's going to consider those choices. I'm already at the top echelon of man. And when you're at the top echelon of man, it's a very, very calculated process. There's a whole bunch of men in the world who understands my value. And if, if men grow up to be like me, you're going to have a whole bunch of people with no criminal record, dedicated athletes who protect and provide for the people close to them, are fantastic for the economy. Well, some people have more influence in the world than others, that's one thing for sure. Now, just because somebody has a lot of influence, does that mean you should always trust them? That is what we are going to study in this video. Over the last year, Andrew Tate, better known as the Cobra Tate, has been becoming more popular by spreading messages to young guys around the idea that the government is trying to emasculate you as well as feminists and that women should stay at their place. Well, okay, there are some good things I think to take from Andrew Tate's uh, ideology and some things that I think are really toxic and dangerous. I will keep some of my opinion for myself and just study what is important to notice here about him. What is very interesting from a mindset and communication perspective is that he's so great, Andrew Tate is so great at manipulating his image through the way he is conducting his interviews and how he's choosing and picking his interviews also I think and he's spreading that image of the person who is always being bullied by the government and he always makes sure through some sleight of mouth and some uh, ways to communicate that any person who disagrees with him is just considered dumb, insecure or not knowing what they're talking about. And I think it is a whole part of a really strong brand image that he's portraying. I really think he's not the character we see uh, on social media in real life. I think he plays a character in social media and coming from a very smart mind it is a very clever move to make sure it feels his goal which is the money the influence all that stuff so here is how andrew tate is manipulating interviews to fit the brand image he wants to portray around himself within the concept of what we call sleight of mouth and frame control you can see on this diagram whenever you want to influence somebody there are a plethora of methods to turn the conversation around to make sure whatever the person says it will still go back to what you want them to believe when you want to play that game like he does, you first have to define a higher frame, which is not reduced to only that, but part of what he's doing is manipulating people into feeling like if they are disagreeing with him, it means they are just weak. They are just weak-minded, they are not as smart as he is, they are not as advanced as he is, they are not as rich as him, that's why they don't think like him. It is a very clever game and a kind of narcissist game to some extent to just make people feel weak if they disagree with him. So a big part of what he's doing is trying to trigger people emotionally, pushing people's emotional hot buttons so that they can be triggered, especially women, obviously, and they can re overreact that way they prove his point that for example women are just too emotional he's successfully accomplishing the goal of portraying that image by triggering people emotionally that logan paul is absolutely not really a tool of the matrix he's a bought and sold individual with no soul he doesn't stand up for anything and he doesn't mean anything he says he gets pieces of paper from susan or whoever else telling him what he's allowed to say on his channel to retain you it. believe that 100 percent. not only do i believe it, he's proved it himself he will flip-flop on any issue he can be bought and sold the dude's a bitch Logan Paul is a bitch, and I will say that here publicly. If anyone wants, I'll fight him for free. The guy's In this example, for example, he's triggering Logan Paul, and he could be triggering any influential person. As long as people respond to him, he won. He just won, because if he makes people talk about him, then he grows his social media presence, and it does work. Said in some, some, I see the little clips here and there, that he would fight me for free. I texted his agent. This was the response I got back. Yo. He said you want to fight him, then WhatsApp him directly. Huh? <laughs> Dummy, I'm trying to fight you, not fucking become your buddy. Now, since he's always presupposing this message, this underlying idea that he's superior, I am superior, and if you refute what I say, you are weak, stuff like that, then he's going to flip the conversation every time uh, somebody is trying to prove him wrong and he's always going to present the ideas he wants to present in a very skillful way so that people believe what he says unconsciously. Who do we have on YouTube who obeys us like a little cock who, who could, speaks to 18, 25 year old men? Logan Paul. Okay, Logan, here's your piece of paper. Do you want to get canceled again, Logan? No, you don't get canceled, do you? No, no, Mom. You're saying a call no. like that was made? 100%, the dude's a bitch. Well, Logan is not capable of independent thought. So if someone didn't give him the narrative, 
You didn't think it up yourself. For example, right here, you can see coming from the higher frame of I am superior, something that pops out of his mind and he's very clever about it. He's very trained in communication or at least he developed this level over the years inside of mouth. Right here, he is creating inferences or cause and effects or consequences. It is just what you want to create out of your language when you want people to believe the assumption you want to plant into their head. Right here it is, Logan Paul was cancelled, therefore he is now weak and say I am dangerous. Uh, because he wants to follow the narrative. It's always coming back to the narrative, like there is some hidden entity somewhere. And I don't think personally Andrew Tate is important enough to have a whole government after him. Maybe he thinks he's that important, but I don't think it is the case. And what is way more interesting is how does he respond to that when somebody else is bringing a counter argument into the conversation? Logan Paul has absolutely no capability for independent thought. He has no character as a man. That's who Logan Paul is. Now you said he got he got uh, uh, canceled in the past. I don't think he ever got canceled. I he think was, his uh, channel was demonetized for ninety days, but they kept all his stuff up. He was never taken fully down like you were fully taken down. They just kind of demonetized. And what is happening here is very interesting because when a um, heavy manipulator like Andrew Tate is being presented with a counter argument, he will never ever ever accept this counter argument as being true. He will always either refute it by some counter example or what he's going to do here, he's going to flip the conversation into another detail that fits into his narrative, into his version of the reality. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not completely familiar with the absolute mechanics of his cancellation. All I do know is that he cried on television repeatedly. So the dude was obviously emotionally affected by it and is fearful of it. And when someone is scared of something, that's the tool you use to manipulate them. Well, he is scared of being canceled because... Here we call that a changing of a frame size. When the counter argument was redefining, refuting what you just said, you just change the frame size, which means you just point to another detail into the whole situation that is going to prove your point instead of responding to what the person said. Simply by saying, oh, I'm not completely familiar with all those things in that situation. Yeah, of course, nobody is, but why do you turn the conversation into something else? Well, because he's controlling the interaction, he's controlling the environment all the time. And then linking that to the consequence he wants to make true about the situation, the thing that fits into his higher frame, his version of reality, which is, oh, he is too weak and has to obey the narrative against me. Like, once again, I would personally admit that Andrew Tate has fantastic communication skills and he can talk fast and he has very fluid ability to think fast. Many great things about his communication skills, but again, this whole plethora of, oh, everybody's against me, the narrative is against me, the government is against me. Yeah, maybe you're just not that important anyway. So I'm not really sure about this whole thing around it. But again, if it fits into a whole marketing image, a whole brand image of he wants people to talk about him, then definitely it is brilliant. So when you study all of his interviews and the way he communicates in his daily interactions, at least the ones we see on social media, it's like no matter what you say, as long as you disagree with him, you are weak you are emotionally wounded, you are controlled by the narrative, by the government, and oh, you are against him, so you are the enemy. Now, what is interesting about these communication skills and about this sleight of mouth ability to always turn the conversation around is that if somebody like him can use it against you, guess what? You can also use it against him or against any person who would be trying to manipulate you in the same way. Here is another example where he's discussing real estate and real estate investments and properties and the idea that, oh, real estate is bad because it is also controlled by the government. The problem is that in this interview that you're going to see, he is talking with Samuel Leeds, who is one of the probably one of the top leading experts on properties in real estate, at least as far as I know. At least he's way more knowledgeable than Tate is. And he's just refuting everything Tate is saying. You say absolutely as it is. And my fear is if you say real estate's dangerous, this is dangerous, that's da people would not know what to do and they'll end up doing nothing, leaving that's their true. money in the bank. That's so true. Help All right. us out. Okay, that's true. Help no. us out. And you can definitely make a lot of money in it. I'm just at the position where I just don't want to have a government to have control of me. And this recent war proved it. Look at all these billionaire Russians who fair and square bought property in London by the law, paid their price, paid the stamp duty, stuck to the rules. Then the president of their country did something who they may not have even agreed with it. Who do they know? Do you agree with everything the prime minister does now? No. The, neither do I. And then the British government came along and just took all their houses off. Here's my stance. 
if you have gold, silver, anything, especially money in the bank, yeah. it can, if you go down the extreme levels enough, it can get taken. Oh, well, that's true. Nothing, nothing on this earth is freehold. Everything is leasehold. My attitude is you've got to invest in what you know. Yeah. If you've made a lot of money, you should invest in what you know. Oh, completely. I don't invest in certain stuff if I don't understand it. Completely. And even if people tell me, this is a great investment, this is a great coin, I'm thinking, I'm all, I'm all good, thanks, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I want to invest in what I understand. And if you understand digital assets, yeah. I mean, for me personally, I think owning a, a website or a link, for me, would feel more risky, because yeah. I can just see any minute, bang, can't open it. I'd rather own land, where even if there's a war and the house gets knocked down, I've yeah. still got the land. There's a shortage of land. I understand. You know, I understand. That, but, I, but, and there's so many ways to skin a cat. And yeah. that's what's so beautiful about making money, right? And yeah. I, I completely understand that. My, my block is ideological. Not, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I know. So right here, by being presented with, with actual facts with somebody who is more knowledgeable on the topic than he is, he's just forced to abandon his position of, oh, everybody's against me, and just say, no, it's just ideological, which here he's admitting, which proves at least to me that I think he's way smarter than what he's showing on social media. I really think it fits the whole brand image he's building, and I would even bet that he's not at all like we see him on social media. I think he's a completely different person in real life, but he's controlling so well what he says, that it always fits into his, char his character, his narrative. And the brilliant thing here, even when being confronted with, con with actual counterfacts that just dismantle his whole idea, he's still kind of keeping the, feed, the face, keeping his face and keeping his image, because in the end, Samuel Leeds is not too far away from Tate's views of the world anyway. So I think that Andrew Tate is always very carefully picking the people he's going to talk with online and he makes sure that the people he's going to talk with have a way lower communication level than he has, a way lower ability to use sleight of mouth, to use frame control than he has. And when he picks somebody who has kind of the same level than him, obviously he's going to pick somebody who is not too far away from his points of view on the government, on masculinity, on women, on all those topics. So again, from a marketing perspective, that's a brilliant idea. When you want people to talk, talk about you and spread that message of, oh, everybody is controlling and you have to uh, follow my principles because I'm the one who is going to lead you away and to break all those negative conditionings where from people who want to control you, then just obey me. Yeah, that fits into the character. Nonetheless, it, is, it just comes back to communication skills and Nothing from what he says is utterly proven by facts. It is what you can believe if you choose to, but everybody has the right to choose what they want to believe instead of just following the first person here. If you feel like what he says is empowering you and making you feel stronger, then okay, fine, that, that is a good thing. If you just feel like oppressed and you're like, oh yeah, I have to believe like him, otherwise I would be controlled. If it is only coming from very negative emotions, sensations, then I would say be careful about characters like this because we don't know how far it is just a controlled marketing image and how much personal trauma there is from him. Maybe he has been manipulated in a very bad way when he was younger or by the government or whatever, and now he might be projecting on other people what the pain he felt. We never know. We can never know until we spend at least like six months to a year with somebody privately. So I would just say there are very good things to learn from him. Just be careful about not taking everything he says for granted. And if you are interested in two slide of mouth, into frame control, into how mindset works, uh, how business people get higher in life, you can check in the description. There are very interesting links that you can click on and learn much more about this.